So first of all, we need to find, you need to create a new project. As you see, when you are creating a new project in OpenBLC, it tell you a select a folder. So let me first of all select create a folder and tell you why it is a folder referencing back to the documentation. After creating a new project, it will ask you for a name. Is it a program or not? Probably there is other types here if you added some add-ons or something, but it's just program. Then you add the language that you're gonna use. Today we're gonna use ladder. Of course, you can use any other language if you know any one of them, but today we're gonna be using ladder and let's name it. So if you go back to the reference material, we'll find something here very important. OpenBLC editor projects are actually folders instead of single files. Thus, you can store a project in a folder that already has files in it. Subsequently, you need to create a new folder for each of your projects. Okay, so this is why we created a folder. And BUD stands for Program Organization Unit. And it used to store all your code and write down your project. Okay, so this is BOU. Then, if we go down here, it starts telling us about the configuration files. First of all, I don't know if this is a previous version or not, but in the current version, you do not have a mother or a parent configuration tab and something underneath it. If we go back here to the editor, you only have the configuration files itself. So if you are trying to follow the documentation and you find any discrepancy, it's not really different, probably just an update. So there is no configuration file in the beginning for now. And here you can read this, it tells some stuff about your configuration. The most important thing it tells you about the interval. So the intervals is like the BLC programs are cyclic, which means they start on the first instruction to finish to the last instruction. So they have cycles. The time they take between each cycle is called intervals in OpenBLC. So as you see here which means your program will be executed every 20 milliseconds if you are setting your interval to 20 milliseconds, which is the default. If we come here, it says 20 milliseconds. So if we go back here, uh, we'll find that they recommend a safe number for all platforms is usually 50 milliseconds. So we can change this to a 50 millisecond. Then we're gonna back here to our project. Here we're gonna define our variables. We will have some inputs and outputs, and we'll find that they require name, class, type, and location. What are those? The name is the name that it's addressed using it in the program, and it will be always the same name you'll find in the monitoring screen in your dashboard here, if you go back to monitoring. Okay, but of course you need to have a device connected with the program. But it will be the same name here. Class, we're gonna set it to local. We're not gonna really sweat about it for now. Type is a type of variable. There are many types. If we go back to the editor here and let's create our three variables. If we go for the types, we'll have many types. Pools, which is stand for Boolean, is what we're gonna use, and it's just say yes or no, true or false, on or off. Then there is another type, integers, sign integers. Unsigned integers, a whole lot of type, a lot of other data types, but today we're only interested in Boolean because the example just needs Boolean. And the basic or uh, basic PLC program just use Booleans for now. So if we go here, we'll find this the name, we know this it, class, don't care about it for now, type. We understood it, we needed to. Then the location, what does this mean? This means what is the corresponding physical bin on your board that this output or input will be applying changes to. So if you go back to the Arduino documentation, we'll find something here called bin mapping. So you have your Arduino bins, those bins are corresponding to those names. So if I said hi on percentage ix 0.0, .0 it will write hi and give me an output from this pin. If it's close or low, it will give me low or not output. Just a quick note here because the documentation is slightly outdated, 
at least the figures here in Arduino Uno and Arduino Mega boards the naming has been changed from 0.0 to 100.0 so we can basically say the port and instead of saying 0 it should to be 100 then the pin on the port so just take care of this if you try to follow this on your own or any documentation you can find in that if it's not updated and you're using Arduino Uno and Mega because I can tell you it will not work and it's extremely frustrating if you do not know why so we come back here we'll find this so we need we have two push buttons and one lamp all of them are pullins and the locations are two for them for digital inputs so we have digital inputs here and one digital output so the push buttons are inputs the lamp is out so we're gonna name our variables and get back to the programming so after naming our variables now we're ready to start our coding here it tells you how to create it and how to do it but I'm assuming if you're ready, you're trying to look into OpenPLC, you know, what is ladder, what are the symbols mean. So we're gonna just do it. If you do not know this, I'm sure that YouTube has a lot of videos on it. And if you want me to do some videos about it, just tell me in the comments down below and I'll be glad to do it. So if we look at our ladder here, what we'll have push button normally open, push button two normally closed, and LED as our coil, and they called here in the OpenBLC software and an LED as a latch as well so let's do that so now we created our example as we can see in the documentation now in the documentation that it tells you about the simulation and this is what we'll be will do and this is what we will be doing right now so if you click the running man icon, it's gonna start generating the code and it tells you the BLC started. So the simulation is running. To enter the simulation tab, you need to click on the debugging instance, this glasses icon. So to start debugging, let's right click it, force true. So now basically you push the button, force false. You do not, you stop pushing the button, however, because there's a latch here, the lamp is still running. If we push that, now it's open circuit, everything is stopped. Now we can just release value here, release value. So our logic is running and it's okay. Now we can install this simulation. Just a quick note, because it can cause some problems. For example, if you have any problem, a fatal problem in your program, let's per se there is no coil here, and you say debug, it will give you an error here and generation fail. However, if you go back to the instance and you already had something working, it will be kept on the last or the previous version of the program. So if you find this tab not updated with a change you have done, and this running man did not change to the stop icon, know that you have an error. For whatever reason, if you did not read the error, it did not show an error properly for you, just know this, you have an error and you need to look in your program, what is the error? So if we go back here and say run, now it generated, and they have the stop sign, so we know our program is good to go. So after getting this done, we need to download or create file that our OpenBLC dashboard can use to interface with our Arduino. To do this, we'll press this down button, down arrow, and we call it YouTube, for example. Your OpenBLC generated successfully. So to use our BLC program that we created, we just need to go <clears throat> to our dashboard, go for programs, go for programs, so we choose a file, we'll go to ours, say open, upload program. Of course, you need to go to your directory if you're not already in it. Let's say the same name. If you need any description for your program, you can write it down here. We don't really need this for now. Upload program. Go to your dashboard. And after getting this done, 
we just need to do two things we need to start our PLC however we need our circuit to be up and running to do so we'll go back to the documentation and for this diagram and let's make it So after getting our circuit assembled, we just need to go to the local host dashboard. We already uploaded our program, so we have it now here. This is the uploaded program. We need to say start PLC. Now it tells us running. To monitor what we're doing, we can go for the monitoring tab. And it tells us this. So we have push button one false, push button two false, and the lamp false. If we press push button one, it tells that this one was pushed to true became true. This one is true now. If we pushed push button two, it's false. So congratulations, you have successfully installed and ran OpenBLC software and already made your first circuit. I hope this video is not too long. You learned something and had fun in it. The next one we're gonna do a more complex example from the written example to a full assembled circuit and that was it for this video please like and subscribe and catch you in the next one peace